Idacio is an app that Nick Spencer introduced to me years ago, and it looks like a blank spreadsheet when you first open it that you can manipulate into whatever you want to use using point-valued icons. As we both explored this app, we decided to create grade-level templates that would include yearly outcomes for our district. We spent a summer developing what is now called grade-level templates in which can be downloaded and used for anyone. Each grade-level template is broken down into four standards a fitness gram tab, as well as an effort tab that I use every day for daily grading and attendance. These tabs and columns are easily modifiable throughout a school year to meet your specific needs. Throughout this video, I'll go into the following components, grading, classroom management, and tips and tricks. First, grading. This app allows me to front load information that I would need within a school year before the school year even starts, such as the dates for every class, grade level templates, as well as students that are registered to attend my school via Infinite Campus. Each grade level template is broken down into standards, which are then broken down into outcomes. There are notes or annotations for each of the outcomes that break down the grading rubric for each of these outcomes. With a finger tap of the screen, you can easily add a weighted grade icon to a student's profile. These icons are broken down into a no grade, beginning understanding, which is a one, partially proficient, a two, proficient, a three, or advanced, a four. These grades are constantly being averaged out for a final grade for each standard as you assess your outcomes throughout the year. You can even change the weight to any of the outcomes if you spend more time on a unit versus another. When I'm giving grades for a specific unit, I will give everyone a proficient grade, and then we'll go into a seating chart to adjust any of the students' grades that are partially proficient, advanced, or are absent. Let me break that down. When I want to grade a class on an outcome, I go to the column button on the bottom right. This will open up all of the tabs. I can then choose from any of the standards or effort grade from their squad line pictures. I use this feature a lot with kindergarten and locomotor movements at the beginning of the year. I'll give all students a no grade, and then we'll go into their seating chart and assess the students I identify as proficient while they're learning the locomotor movement routine, even though I don't know their names. When I'm ready for the next movement, I just go back to the column and choose the next locomotor movement. Last, there is also a final grade tab so you don't have to go through each standard when you need to enter your grades during the mid-year and the end of the year. I use the effort tab for attendance, a daily effort grade, and it can also contribute to standard threes grade. Before I start my day, I will give every student a three in my grade book in order to minimize extra work during each class. I will give a student a no grade if they are absent. I use this as part of a daily exit slip. When students leave the gym every class period, they show me a nonverbal grade using their fingers. First through fifth grade students show me a one, two, three, or a four. A four grade means that they helped another student out during the class. If I didn't see how they helped, they need to tell me who and how they helped out. A number three grade means that the student did their best throughout the class period. A number two grade means the student either had to sit out for a timeout or did not wear proper footwear. A number one means the student consistently made poor choices or showed zero effort during class. My kindergartners show me a thumbs up or thumbs down instead of a one, two, three, and four. If I ever see a student help out during class, I'll have them go to one of the whiteboards where they'll write their name to help reinforce a positive environment. If a kindergartner writes their name on the board, they show me two thumbs up at the end of class. I like having an effort grade each day because it holds students accountable for their behavior and attitude every class period. When grading standards one through four, depending on the grade level and standard, I grade differently. Standard one, I grade all levels using formative assessments while students are engaged in the particular activity. If an administrator ever asks for student written work, I will have them fill out a self-assessment as well as a few strategy questions around that unit. I have my assessments uploaded into each outcome of each unit that I can share with both students and admin. I'm very thankful that I don't currently have an administrator that requires student written work, so I don't have students fill out self-reflections at the elementary level. Since I only see most students once a week, I feel it's more important to expose them to as many skills at this age opposed to incorporate writing in a physical education setting. When giving kindergarten first and second graders a grade for standards two and four, I use my health board to keep me organized throughout a school year. This is my health board that has been an effective tool when teaching health concepts to kindergarten through second grade. I break down each grade level outcome by following our district's pacing guide. 
I use PowerPoint presentations to review several concepts with these grade levels. All of the grade level outcomes are written as well as a guided question for students. I make a color key for each of the grade level teachers. I mark a third of the question in the teacher's color after I cover a particular concept with that class. This is a great way to help me remember which groups have covered which outcomes throughout a year. Once I cover a concept with a class, I reinforce these concepts throughout the year by asking students questions in order to be a tagger at the end of a class or in order to be the first one to line up. When assessing these concepts, I'll ask students the guided question and will record their answers in my digital gradebook, Adasio. Although I still mark third through fifth grade colors, I don't use this board as much for those groups because we use the plicker routine every day. When introducing plickers for the first time, I align students' plicker card numbers with their seating charts or squad lines. So the first five students are from squad line one, the next five students are from squad line two, etc. I will stand next to the plicker chart as students grab their card for the first time to make sure that they're grabbing the correct card. I also like using plickers because whenever I get a new student, I can have another student show them how they answered their plicker question using their plicker card, and by the second day, the new student can feel successful as they enter the gym grabbing their plicker card and answering a question without potentially even knowing what the question says. As we review the answers to the class, it also doesn't show who gets the right or wrong, but instead a class percentage. When students enter the gym, they grab a plicker card off the chart. A plicker card is essentially a QR code that has letters A, B, C, and D. I put stickers on the back of these cards to make it a little bit easier for students to answer. When they're answering the card, they don't have to look at the front. So they'll grab their allocated card, they'll read the multiple choice question that has a picture support, they'll scan it by pointing it to the iPad with the whatever letter they want on top, and when they scan it, it turns blue on the screen so it tells them they answered it. This is a video from the actual iPad itself, and it's really nice to be able to hold the iPad when you're first teaching this routine to make sure students grab the correct card. While they're doing their warm-up or putting them away, I tend to be able to grab my Adasio app and I can take attendance before they even sit down. We review each question every day and all the data is archived and it's a great way to show growth over time. We really focus on trying to get 80% correct on each of our answers. Idasio is a great tool for classroom management as it allows me to take pictures of my students on the first day while I put them into squad lines. This is helpful when teaching kindergarten or being a first year teacher. I use squad lines and pictures because I can easily call out any student that is not giving the attention that they need or I can help them find their squad line if they forgot where to sit. I can also move any student who I feel needs to be in closer proximity to me when I give my instructions. Printing out these squad lines for substitutes can be helpful to identify where and who sits during their day. Another cool thing about Idasio is you can use up to 10 different seating charts. You first need to hit the seating plan button, then choose which seating chart you want to use. Next, hit the hammer icon on the top right, then hit group automatically. Then you'll have a choice to choose from the style you want your students to be grouped, the number of students in a group, as well as the spacing. Last, hit the group automatically button at the bottom. Once you have grouped them, you can always adjust any students that you want to work together with or need to be separated. You can also use the dice tool at the top to randomly choose a student if you were to have every student run a warm up throughout the year or just want to randomly choose a student. If you ever want to clear your dice history, you can hit the hammer again, hit random picker, and then hit clear dice history. One last thing before I conclude this video is that when you export the information out of Infinite Campus into Idasio, you can export more than just the student's name. I choose to export the student's name, native language, and birth dates. It's a fun connection piece being able to say happy birthday to a student as they're walking towards your class. Also, make sure you're always backing up your Idasio templates as you assess throughout the school year by pushing the backup button and doing a full backup. In conclusion, these are all ways that Idasio and Plickers can help improve your classroom management and grading techniques. If you would like to implement Idasio, I made videos that will walk you through the steps to download these templates using Google Drive, Dropbox, Excel, and Infinite Campus on my YouTube channel, Coach Chapla, under the playlist Idasio. If you don't have access to Infinite Campus, I'm sure that there's a way your secretary can help you sh pull class rosters from the software program your school district uses. If you don't want to use this process to import your students, you can also do it manually by typing each student's name. I also have videos on how to get free Plicker cards and videos on how to make questions as well as tips on how to get this routine implemented into your gym. 
I hope you like this grading and assessing video. Feel free to reach out to me on my Facebook page, Coach Chapla, if you need any one-on-one -on -one help or have any questions.